All right, hello and welcome. I'm Jeff from Finally Learn, and today we're going to talk about inventory, the very first video of the basics of inventory. And so we're going to talk about cost of goods sold and the income statement and what happens if we have inventory errors. So the first point I want to make is inventory is the largest cost for a company that sells products. Sometimes these companies are called merchandising companies or retail companies. Could be a grocery store, could be a, de a department store, could be a manufacturer that sells products. So the inventory itself is an asset. So when you create inventory, you build it or you buy inventory, then um, you're planning to resell it for a profit. So that's an asset on your balance sheet. When inventory is sold, it becomes an expense and we call it something like cost of goods sold. We abbreviate it COGS or it is cost of sales or cost of revenue. So all that means the same thing. You can use those interchangeably and, and you, you'll see that. Now, the basic income statement for a merchandising company, just very simple, would be sales minus the, gross, uh, the cost of goods sold and would give you gross profit. And then you'd have something like, uh, this could be several names. Sometimes they put selling in this, but I'm just calling it general and administrative expenses, G&A expenses and then you'd have in a world with no tax you'd have net profit or net income or net earnings or simply profit now the gross profit is the first profit calculation it is sales minus cost of goods sold so you hear in this example you see the 120,000 minus the 75 gives you 45 and the cost of running your business is G&A expenses, 38000 so your net profit, net income here is 7000 Now, this cost of goods sold is comes from the product cost, and the product cost is the asset up here, and then when it's actually sold, it becomes a period cost. So here, everything on the income statement is a period cost, and it's an expense. So you'll see that cost of goods sold for the period, this may be a month or a year or whatever, cost of goods sold is the largest expense. It's larger than all the other general and administrative expenses, salaries um, and paying for employees and things like that, running the business. All right, so let's co uh, calculate cost of goods sold. You'd have beginning inventory. It's what we started with. You have purchases, what we purchased during the period. And then you total that up, what we could have sold is, this is our cost of what we could have sold. So that's goods available. And then it's hard to count what you sold. It's easy to count what you didn't sell. So what we did not sell, have an error here, what we did not sell. Is any inventory. We did not sell any inventory. So therefore we must have sold our items must have cost 75,000. So it's we started with 12, we added 80, we have 92,000 as goods available minus any inventory what we did not sell uh, is what we sold is our cost of goods sold, cost of sales, cost of revenue. Now, we're hopefully going to sell that for more than what it cost us. All right, so here's the the basic format, so let's set up an example. Let's do a, a simple example first. So let's say Shaq sells basketballs. At the beginning of April, he had 10 basketballs. He purchased 65 more during the month, and he actually sold 60 basketballs to customers. And let's assume that the cost for Shaq for every basketball is $8, and he turns around and sells it for $20 each, and just the cost of running his business is $500, the G&A expenses. So let's let's calculate this. Let's do the units first. Now, generally, this is all going to be dollars, so I just want you to think about the units. How many units did we start with? We had 10. How many did he purchase? 65. How many did he have available? He could have sold. He could have sold the 10 plus the 65. So he could have sold a total of 75. How much did he not sell? Well, we know he sold 60, right? So you can do a backwards calculation if you need to. You can say, well, 75 that he had available minus the 60 that he sold is 15. Now, it's easier to count the 15. A lot of times you would just count the ending inventory 15 and you know 
you have 60 that you sold. Now let's put dollars on this. So our beginning inventory, 10, 10 units, how much did each cost? Each cost us $8, or cost check $8, and then purchases 65, 65 times the $8. So he purchased 60, um, 65 times $8 is 520. So what we have, 80 plus the 520. Let me try it again here. 80 plus the 520. So 600 is the goods available. That should be $75 times 8. 75 units times $8. So he had 75 basketballs each costing Shaq $8. So what's the ending inventory? Well, the ending inventory is 15 times the 8. So what he did not sell was 120. And so what he did sell, 600 minus the 120 equals 480. So the cost of the 60 that he sold was $8 each or $480 total. So that's cost of goods sold. Now, let's do the income statement based on this. Okay, so let's figure out our sales price, our total sales. Our total sales are going to be 60 that he sold. 60, he sold 60 basketballs. He sold each basketball for $20. So 60 times 20 is 1200 The cost of goods sold we know is 480 We just calculated that. So what kind of gross profit did, did he make? Well, 1200 minus 480 he made $720 in gross profit. And then we have some cost of running our business. So it's going to be the $500. So how much net profit did the company make? Well, $720 minus the $500 equals $220. So that's how you handle cost of goods sold, how you calculate it, how you do, um, calculate the net income, net profit, calculate gross profit, so on. Okay. Let's do our next problem. Next problem is, let's solve for missing information. Let's say we have the following information. We have sales, gross profit, g and expenses, ending inventory, and beginning inventory. And we want to solve for missing information. We can just complete these two formats. We can calculate cost of goods sold, and we can calculate the net profit or net income. So here's what you want to do on a problem like this. Just take what you know, put it in a format that you know, and solve for what you don't know. Now, it requires some algebra here. So what, what are we given here? We're given sales of 90000 Our cost of goods sold, we don't know. Our gross profit is 33000 Our G&A expenses is 27000 Our ending inventory is 9000 and our beginning inventory is 5000 All right, so we're missing information. I'm going to highlight our missing information. So let's just say we have this information we need to calculate. We're missing about five different spots. So we could ask some questions like, hey, what is, what is our purchases? What are our purchases? What is cost of goods sold? What is net profit? Now watch, cost of goods sold is twice. So we really only are missing four items. Cost of goods sold is included in both the calculation for cost of goods sold and the income statement. So let's see what we can do here. Well, cost of goods sold we can calculate directly. It is going to be 90 minus some number gives us 33. So minus the 33 gives us that number. So cost of goods sold must be 57,000. And our net profit is going to be 33 minus 27. So that is 6,000. So we have the income statement finished. So our cost of goods sold, we know, is 57,000. So we have goods available. Minus 9,000 gives us 57,000. So that number would be 57 plus the 9. 
So 66 minus 9 gives us 57,000. So our goods available must be 66,000. So how much did we purchase? Well, if we had total available 66, subtract out the 5,000, and we must have had purchases of 61,000. So this is a way, if you have partial information, you can solve for the remaining information. So this is how to calculate cost of goods sold in, in the income statement with missing information. All right, let's look at inventory errors. Now, inventory errors are going to affect cost of goods sold, which affects net income. So let's look at this problem three here. And I just created some numbers, just some basic little numbers. Let's assume that inventory is correct. And our beginning inventory is 1,000. We purchase nine. We have goods available of 10. Ending inventory is going to be 1,500. So our cost of goods sold is 8,500. Let's assume our sales are 20,000, cost of goods sold is 8,500, and our gross profit is 11,500, and our GNA expenses are 7,000, our net income 4,500. Okay, all that's correct, we're finished. Except, what if we say we have a file error, I'm, I'm sorry, a inventory error. We have an inventory error, let's say we have any inventory is overstated by 1,000. Ending inventory is 1,500 here. What if ending inventory is 1,000 too high? What's the effect on cost of goods sold and what's the effect on net income? Okay. Now, I've built this all with numbers uh, and, and formulas, so we should be able to, to, to change. So let's do this one. Let's assume, I've just recopied this, Let's assume ending inventory is overstated by 1,000. What's the effect on cost of goods sold and net income? Well, let's make this 1,000 too high. Overstated means it's too high by 1,000. So let's make this 2,500. We can change the green cell. Now watch what happens. It changes the cost of goods sold and it changes the net income. Now all I did was, if I take this 7,500, minus the original 1500, you can see we have overstated in an inventory by 1000. Inventory is off by 1000. Well, what's the effect? It's 7500 minus the 8500. That means in, uh, cost of goods sold, any in inventory causes cost of goods sold to go down. So an increase in in an inventory makes cost of goods sold be understated by a thousand and net income is going to be overstated by a thousand. It was 4,500 and now it's 5,500. Okay. So let's think about this. Let's uh, plug this in. If any inventory is overstated, what's the effect on cost of goods sold? Well, it's going to be understated. What's the effect on net income? It's going to be overstated. So if any inventory is too high by whatever number, then net income is going to be too high by that number, not counting uh, income tax. So let's think of it the other way. What if any inventory is 1,000 too low? Remember, it started at 1,500. So let's make any inventory 500. So let's say it's too low. It is understated. Well, what's the effect on cost of goods sold. Cost of goods sold is going to be overstated. And if it's too high, that means net income is going to be understated or too low. Pretty cool, right? So let's go back and put our 2,500 in and we'll go on to beginning inventory. Now, the same problem. I just calculated this. The same problem, and I've already got the uh, calculations in. What if beginning inventory is overstated by $1,000? What's the effect on cost of goods sold and net income? So if beginning inventory is 2,000 instead of 1,000, it means our goods available is too high. It means our cost of goods sold is too high. It means our net income is too low. So if beginning inventory is overstated, our cost of goods sold would be overstated and net income would be 
understated. Well, let's look at it the other way. This number was a thousand. Let's make this number 500. It is understated by 500. So understated, it means that our cost of goods sold is going to be understated. And it means our net income will be overstated. See, cost of goods sold and net income move in opposite directions. So there is a direct relationship between ending inventory and net income. They have a direct relationship. So if ending inventory is too high, net income is too high. Now, beginning inventory and net income have an opposite relationship. That means if beginning inventory is too high, then net income is too low. All right, so that's our inventory basics. How to calculate cost of goods sold, how to calculate the income statement, what happens if we have missing information, and what happens if we have inventory errors. Inventory errors affect cost of goods sold and affect net income. Hey, thanks for watching.